Great. We're going to have a few testimonies this morning about God's provision in our lives. But I just felt in the beginning to share uh, in the first service from Philippians 4. Philippians 4 verse 4. My brother and my sister, when we have a testimony about provision, hey man, that is the, sometimes the most uh, dangerous topic to touch on. And you see one prophet addressing all these arguments and quarrels and twists, all this stuff that people had just reasoning. And, and that is the prophet Malachi. And in the book Malachi, he says, God says, I'm saying this, but you are saying that. I'm saying this, and then you say, where did we do that? I'm saying this, and then you say, where did we say that, Lord? arguing quarreling about a lot of stuff and in the heart of that chapter we find about the tithing and the offerings now god says test me only time when he says test me in this how i will open up the windows of provision over your life and you will stand amazed at my blessing in your life and we've seen so many people so many people so many churches and god have mercy on us that bring forth some prosperity teaching that is not nice because touching on this topic you're dealing with the roots of all evil greed geldgierigheid man and the enemy will not let you just go from that because you know what can what can happen if he must get one in the, in the core group of Jesus that will betray him, how? With lust or with bitterness or with selfishness or with fear or with anger or, no, with money. We will get it right that somebody will walk for three and a half years with Jesus Christ, live with him, and still turn his back on Jesus. In what? What? what how will we get it right? The devil's saying to one another. We can deceive him with the power of money. Are you with me? So in that sense, I say, my brother, my sister, whenever you, you think of God's provision in your life, you need God's grace. You need God's grace because that's the time when Israel's heart every time turned away from God. And Paul says, it's written up for you to learn from. It's not how will I go through a time when I don't have enough and my circumstances are challenging. No, it's about how will I go through everything when the blessings are just all over me. Because that was the time when their heart wandered away from God. That is not what God has for our lives. Are you with me? So, when we see something like Surrender everything to you, to, to God, and sow what you sow, you will reap. And you money to sow, and then God will just bless you in this and bless you. In Be careful. There's churches in Ukraine, in, in Gaza, in Israel, in Russia, and many places, in Africa where millions are starving. What type of gospel do you believe when you think about that? But you know, God gives to you in your hand seed where you must be the sower or bread where you must be the eater where you must you are blessed to enjoy that bread but also seed to enjoy in the sowing are you with me it's an honor to give your life it's an honor to sow it's not like they must be thankful. I'm thankful, God, that I have the privilege to sow. Most of all, we look at the example from Father through His Son to us. That gave everything. That, John 3, 16, we all know, for God so loved the world. But there's a second word that I want you forever, forever to remember. For God so loved the world. You can love somebody. It can be very cheap. You can even buy love legally some of these days. You can have a love for a lot of stuff. 
You can say, I love the Lord in principle. Yes. Yeah, the love can be poured out in your hearts through the Holy Spirit. Romans 5, 5. Hey? But to understand what is all of this love all about, the richness, the depth, the beauty, the quality of this love, where love is pure, it's kind, it's not cheap. I want to call it a clean love. Uh, transparent love that is illuminating just this beauty of God through that love. May God teach us how to love in such a way because God so loved the world that he gave, that he gave, that he gave everything. So in your tithing, in your offering, in what you sow, in your time, in your talents, in your skill, in whatever you give and surrender yourself, it's a it must be done in love. If it's not done in love or through love, then it's worth nothing. It's cheap. It's, ter- it's rubbish. Wasting your time. Wasting your life. Oh, and we learn that depth and that quality of love where? With one another. And God will send you. You will have this awesome privilege of God sending people into your life that sometimes irritate you. That sometimes frustrate you. That sometimes you feel... <sighs> I'm willing to slaughter this guy in love. You know? <laughs> Are you with me? May God help us. May God help us in this. So, in the sowing, it's all in that I will do it as a privilege. Are you with me? I'm saying, Hebrews 12, Jesus said, For the joy, for the joy set before him, he went to the cross. Now in Gethsemane, it does not look like joy. Right? Blut gesweet, as they would say. I don't know how they say it in English. But in that, it was God, if it's your will, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Here's the sowing. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And he pray, and he prays, and he prays. But there must be joy in the offering. Then the offering is unto the Lord. If the Christians are just miserable about everything that they must release, everything they must sow, and how they must give their time, and how in trouble they are, and how they must get right, and they're supposed to have time with God, time with the Word, and this doesn't work, and that doesn't work. And the world look at them and say, what the hell? Hello? 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 But if we could understand the depth, the richness that we have in Christ. That's the difference between you and the guy in the world. Where God provides that what has eternal value. Eternal value. Maybe you sow, but in your children or their children, there will be a reaping. Maybe you sow through prayer and you pray, but you don't pray just for you. You pray for the provision for the generations. You pray for the provision in the nations. When Job prayed for his friends, then things changed in his life. When he looked away from himself. But once again, it's not a trick. It's not a trick. Are you with me? So, we see Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious of nothing. Be anxious of nothing. Tell your neighbor, don't be anxious. No, say it with attitude. Don't be anxious. Okay. But it's easy to say, I choose not to be anxious. Rubbish. It's not going to work. How will you get out of that anxiety, that stress, that fear, that disappointment, that, that rat race, whatever that rat is? Be anxious of nothing, but do the opposite by doing the following. In prayer, bring everything, your desires, whatever you desire. God is not telling you just forget about your desires. No, he says bring your desires before the Lord. My son, my daughter, bring your desires. Bring that what is in your heart before me. In prayer, supplication. Supplication is not suffering. It's not moaning, throwing a tantrum to get it. Are you with me? And then he says, with thanksgiving. So what you pray? You pray until you, from your heart, can bring it with thanksgiving. And in that thanksgiving, it's a joy, it's a privilege that I have. To bring it before you, God, the true and the living God. Because it's a privilege, my brother, my sister. It's not your because of 
your goodness that God revealed himself to you. There's other guys, they are dying there. They Muslims, they are so of them, so many of them. They just didn't hear about the gospel. Why must they go and burn in hell? I didn't know the answers of a lot of stuff. But I know we are, without the blood, we are standing in shame. The Church of Christ standing in shame of how could we have not brought the gospel to them. And God must not just forgive us, please, but he must bring a revival in the church to get over themselves and into the nations. Only if they understand, only if we understand the awesome, awesome privilege we have to know him. And now he has provided for us. We are drowning in provision. Drowning, in the, I want to say, in his grace, in his mercy, and in his blessings, his hand over your life. My brother, my sister, what am I saying? I must stand in the fear of God and know what I have is only, only, only a privilege. Paul says, I will boast in nothing except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. True? So I will be anxious of nothing. Why? Because in prayer, I bring everything before the Lord with a focused prayer. Supplication is not suffer in prayer. It's the intensity in prayer with thanksgiving so that what? I can receive everything that God, what I prayed for. No. So that what? What will God promise? When you do this accurately, leave this anxiety. When you drop the anxiety, how? Through prayer. For God, focusing on him, focusing into a place of thanksgiving, what you will receive in the place of the anxieties, peace beyond all understanding. And that peace will protect your heart that can think a lot of rubbish thoughts or your mind that are, can make a lot of stupid decisions. And God says, I will put my protection over you if you bring everything before me with thanksgiving. I will put my protection over your mind, over your heart that can mislead you more than anything on earth. I'll put my protection on you. And then you must work with the peace of God that's over your mind, over your heart. And he says, now, think upon the following things. Everything that is noble, that is good, that is excellent. Get your thoughts that are all over the place now with the peace of God. Over your heart, over your mind. Get your thoughts in line that your thoughts will be my thoughts. Your heart will be my heart. You will desire what I desire. And in this place of peace, I promise you in the new covenant, I will write my laws in your heart and in your mind. How? If you believe that, you will have respect for what he wants to do and you will get into the word. Not to find out where you're wrong, where are you right. That's you and the snake. Tree of knowledge of good and evil. Where I'm right, where I'm wrong. No. In the place of covenant, where God has put his hand of protection over your mind, over your heart, that can go into a lot of rubbish. And in that place, if you work with God and work with the word, then, verse 9, when you are teachable, you do in discipleship what you are told to do, then you will see the God of peace will be with you. God is with you, but he wants to reveal himself in a special way. So he says, you bring anxiety, everything before him, you will receive the peace. And when you work with the peace of God, verse 9, then the God of peace will be with you. You will not have just the peace of God. You will see in reality how the God of peace guides you in a special way, in a special way. That's the amazing awesomeness of answered prayer so in the giving of tithing in the giving of in, in the sowing and and sowing time in prayer sowing time with faith and time with the, with the word of god sowing the energy the focus the mind in the word and through the word the awesome awesome provision is the god of peace will be with you and if that's true just let's just take another three verses Further, he's just going on about provision. In verse 19, he says, My God will supply in all, all your needs in all of the richness in glory that he has. He will supply in everything. That's verse 19. But let's just do verse 10, 11, 12, and 13. What's that 
Paul gets into this place where he says, I had a lot and I had nothing. I suffered this and I had this. I had this positive breakthrough and I had, went, I had to go through all of this. And then he says, but I've learned, I've learned to be content. And we are going through stuff, my brother, my sister, so that we can learn how to be content. And contentment has to do with an awesome thankfulness in my life. An awesome thankfulness. And that I know it's an honor. It's a privilege. It's an honor. What I can have today. And if you have a thankfulness in you. And if you see what you have as a privilege, as an honor, you didn't deserve it at all. I have the privilege of knowing him. I have the privilege. And I'm thankful for that. That equals contentment. Contentment is what I have is enough. But you find people, what they have is enough, but they're actually just slacking their work. They just wara wara through life. I have enough. You're supposed to trust God for more. Because you are not satisfied with what you have. No. No, 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 no. From a place of contentment. From a place where I say, what I have is God. And with God I have more than enough. Jehovah Jireh. The, provi- the God that provides. El Shaddai. The one that is more than enough. The good shepherd. The good shepherd is with you. You shall not be in need. You shall not want. Why? Just because he's good. Why do you trust God for that healing? There's one guy, he prays one, two times. Somebody prayed for him. He didn't even have the faith. Somebody prayed for him. He, he got healed. You're standing for 20 years in faith, and you speak the word, and you, and you trust God, and you walk with God, and you don't have the healing yet. Why must you pray further? Because God is good. Finish. It didn't manifest. It didn't happen. Even though it didn't happen, though, even though it's not logic. You trust for that healing because God is good. What is the most stressed clinic? What is the most stressed clinic in England? Uh, A sparrow stress clinic. You don't find something like that. Why? Because the sparrow just knows, he just has it in it that tomorrow God will provide. You don't find the sparrow maybe from the cold, but not from the stress in the night. Hello? Now that's where Jesus says in Matthew 6, how much more, how much more are you, you little of faith? If God can, will look at the sparrow. You don't remember in the olden days, some of you guys will remember, on the one set, there were the two, two Moses. When we had one time the privilege at, uh, uh, in the army to with the gospel sing group to went to the house to turn house, you know, turn house from the president in Cape, Cape Town. And the first lady, she said, no, when they had to decide, when the guys had to decide what is on the one cent, they said, the two Moses, the two sparrows must be out there to declare that our provision is not in the system of money, but our provision is in God. That was actually where it came from originally. So in the system of money, my brother, my sister, will you always have the picture of the two Moses, the two sparrows that God will always provide. God will always provide. Amen. It's not on the level of the performance of the sparrow that determines if God will provide. God will provide because he's God and he's a good God. Finish. But how he provides, we don't understand, and then we put question marks. Yes, good. Yeah, God is good. I'm just going to leave you there. And I say, make that contentment be part of your life. So if they testify, people testify uh, about finances, it's not like God is faithful because he provided for me. No. God is faithful. If you see his provision or not, God is faithful. He does not have to prove himself to you that he's faithful. Are you with me? But you give thanks to God that in his faithfulness, this is how he showed his mercy on you in this way, where many others did not see that provision. And you pray that God's provision will be over them also. Is that that okay? Can we go with that? 
in the time when it uh, was very rough in my life, where uh, the, I had to leave medical school and the medical bursary and everything six months before Bible school, there wasn't a time so intensely that God just challenged me to sow. Not as a trick, not as a trick, but to make sure my heart is not into when I have finance, life will be better. When I have this provision, then I can have a life. No. No, not at all. Not at all. You with me? Maybe this testimony that I gave 320 times, let's go again. So I was driving and I, I, I was hungry, not because of fasting, but because I had no money for food. And somebody gave me some money, and then it's dangerous to pray in tongues. So I was in the, I was in the folaki that I had, and I was praying in tongues, praising God for it. And God said, this money that they gave you in those days, 1980-something, 300 rand or 800 rand was a lot. And God said to me, this money is not yours, it's that lady in that car's. Oh, I prayed a little bit, and then I realized I must follow this lady. And it was over the bridge there at this uh, showgrounds, and further and further, and to the right in there. What's down here? The guy be president something. And I thought, but how can it be for this lady? It's in, it looks like a good house, and where she stops. And I stopped far. I said, don't worry. And she said, oh, she was so stressing about this guy following her all the way. I said, no, God just said to me, I must give you something. And she was like, and I said, God said to me, I must give you this money. She was like, ah, cry. I said, what, what, what? She said, no, I was providing for this family with the small kids. They have no, no food. They have nothing. And I provided for a, quite a while for them. And my husband said, you will go to them now. You will tell them there will be no provision anymore unless you will have an issue. Unless you want an issue in this marriage. So if you want this marriage, you, you obey me now and you're going to tell them there's nothing. And I went there and I had these kids with this expectation. And I came there with nothing. And I had to tell them, sorry, I cannot give you anything. <laughs> and while she was driving back, she was crying in the car. Crying, crying out to God and saying, God, this is not right. This is not fair. And while she was crying out to God, this is not fair. God spoke to the guy in the car next to him and said, give the money to that girl lady. <laughs> Hello. I was hungry, man. But I had some reserves, I think. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, bottom line, that night, my brother, my sister, that night, that, those little kids will never, ever, ever, ever forget when we had no food. Look When they look at the stars. Then God, who is my daddy, he spoke to a guy to give my, that auntie money so that that auntie can buy us food so that tonight we can have food. God is an awesome God. And that type of challenges God wants to put on his people, on his children, to show the world that he's a good God. May God, may you allow God to challenge you in freaky ways to sow in your time, in your talents, in your abilities, in the way that he wants to do it. And you will have exciting, exciting testimonies. You can take another three services about this type of thing. In how many times I failed, but also in many times that God gave me awesome privilege with this type of thing.